Okay. Okay. Hello, wonderful people. Um, yeah, I was just saying before I hit record, just a little group. I'm sure we'll get some newies popping in, but good to see you for Feb. February is half, <laughs> nearly halfway through. Craziness. Craziness. So how are we? Good, nice. thank you. Job with the enthusiasm, would you? Fantastic. Thank you, Justine. Oh, my gosh. Come on, you you champions. All right, so we've got a small group. So what are, then I think with a small group, I think we all get to we all get to just share um some good news or some breakthroughs or some stuff that's going on so which continent shall we start in <laughs> let's start in africa because gene you've got stuff going on, don't you? tell us you've got excited. yeah um so i've got a lot going on at the moment um so a bit of bad news that's helped me with my writing so my father um was diagnosed with um cancer in december Oh, and sorry. and yes, so so mm -hmm. with my mom still working, she's asked me to to help out and look after him. So while my dad is sitting having chemo, and then the days after, I'm actually able to go and spend quality alone time with him. And when he's sleeping, I have found that editing my book in that space has been on a different level it's not the same level as sitting at my desk and editing it's it's almost like my emotions are are different mm. and and it and it's 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 amazing um i'm nearly finished editing which i didn't think that i would be at this stage um so i'm super super happy but obviously sad as well um but silver lining. It's, so how it's, how is your dad? Is he is he okay? I mean, is he? No, no, unfortunately not. No, he's stage four. Um, we're basically just trying to keep him alive as and comfortable for as long as possible. But he's mm. on borrowed time currently. Mm. Um, I'm so sorry. Yeah. So, so thanks. Yeah. But it's good that but you, yes, can it's find, been... you can find that positive, and and you're right. Yeah. So that time with him is. is yeah. You just, you'll never ever, you know, mm. regret that, and then no, and then no. that heightened emotional state that you're speaking about, you're editing with more passion. I would imagine exactly. Is that, exactly. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, and it's amazing. Not, certainly not suggesting we go and find someone with cancer, but I mean, the question is then how do we, how do we shift ourselves into that state, that mm. emotional state? That's an interesting, a real interesting. Um, yeah. Is anyone able to do it? <laughs> Get them into that, just to shift themselves into that emotional state so they're more... Probably with less sadness, though. It is sadness? But but hopefully with less sadness. So I still yeah, achieve that yeah. focus, um, but less, less sadness. So what are you feeling when you're writing? Tell me, I'm when you're editing, what... So, so, so basically, like, it's almost as if because I'm in a different zone, so I'm not in my own environment, so I'm in a different environment, and it's almost as if I, I have to only focus on two things. So I'm not distracted by, yeah. by I can't get up and, you know, go and see to the cat or, or anything like that. So I have to be focused either on my father or on my book. So it's like a hyper focus, but yeah. it's it's in a calm state because I've got to be calm when I'm with him. Okay, it's interesting. So it's it? very very yeah. interesting. Really interesting. And yeah. any any yeah. thoughts, Jean, that you might dedicate the book? Yes. To? So he's so he's actually already asked me to to dedicate the book to I him. See, he's asked you. He's cheeky. <laughs> he was like, yeah. "I want to be famous." <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, well, look, it's which is really fun. <laughs> yeah. It feels like both the two tasks are so meaningful to you. you know, yes. Dad's so meaningful, and so it's so meaningful being present, 
and being with dad in such special times. And then the book is, you know, which Andrew's helped us all to kind of realise how yeah. special it is to write a book, isn't it? And how exactly. precious that is and so on. So that's also very meaningful work. And I love, I mean, you mentioned borrowed time and your dad's on borrowed time, but then yes. aren't, we, aren't we all? We I all are. all on borrowed time. And Yes. And, and so what so wasn't that just doesn't that just reinforce the need to really be and I know we hear this so much, just be present with everything and everyone and it it's it's hard to do, right? Mm. Hard to Life do. gets in the way. It does, it does. But so this reminds you, doesn't it, that you know you can be if it's important enough, you can be hundred percent present with with the important things in your life. And then you realise, Jean, I'm sure you realise all those other fluffy things that, you know, the urgency that takes so much of your time, they go, well, they're really not that important. Yeah, that's interesting. Thank you for sharing that. And um, I'll be praying for your dad. And um, Thank you. hope he stays comfortable and joyful with you for his moments left on this planet. And then he'll go, go home and um, have a life of beautiful peace and eternity. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Actually, that's a really uplifting way to start. I mean, you would think when you know someone Jean's talking about her dad with cancer, that would be a, a bit of a downer, but it's actually very uplifting. So thank you. Okay, let's go to Asia because I mean, Alice, Alice had a it was Hello. a breakthrough. Alice, this is a breakthrough. Yeah, it was. Yes. So share what happened for you on the weekend. Oh, I did. I did my first talk online on Zoom with people. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't really looking forward to it. I was very resistant. But I did it. And it was good. Yeah, it was good enough. How do you feel now you've done it? No, and and I know there's a lot of you've got a mixed emotion because we <laughs> chatted today. But in a positive way, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I'm relieved that that I completed it and I did and you know, I know that whenever I do an interview or, you know, now obviously my first talk, um, I know that all the words come and it all flows and I'm very calm and I just, you know, I believe I have guides that are supporting me to, 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 to speak, you know, and to tell my truth and to be in my authentic self. So, um, so that helps a huge amount. <laughs> and knowing that, um, yeah, it's very supportive. So, yeah. So, I accidentally, uh, well, I did record it because I thought I could maybe use parts of it, it, but unfortunately I haven't been able to find it I used because like it. I forgot to press the stop button of the recording. So, um, and I was using my friend's Zoom because she has the paid one and I've just got the free one. So, um, it's, so there. Have, it's somewhere. You'll still have the recording. It's definitely. I haven't found it on my computer, but maybe she'll be able to still look on hers. She's looked, yep. but she can't find it. But anyway, regardless of that, I thought, you know what, I could just record it with me talking to camera anyway. And um, so I couldn't do that, you know. Um, but yes, it was a challenge and I really didn't want to do it. What was your resistance and talking to people just yourself? For me, it just seemed like, I don't know, it just seemed like I didn't want to do it. But anyway, I've done it now. So obviously I know I can do it and I'm sure I will do it again some point maybe hopefully more than four people lots but it lots. was very intimate and lovely and I got a lovely message back from somebody I've recently met who's read my book and she said she was very inspired and um, uplifted by the talk because I was basically not talking about my book I was just talking about the five doorways of personal transformation that I I gathered and the tools I already had. And I'm just sharing that with people that, you know, are going through transformation, aren't we all? Um, but, you know, I went through quite a radical um, transformation 10 years ago and um, completely changed my life. I had a spiritual awakening and a mental breakdown and I had to rebuild myself from scratch. So thankfully I've done that. So it's great that I can share that. And I feel like it's my mission to share that with other people and support others um, as I was supported in parts, but also, you know, the difficult times of um, what I experienced, which obviously I can't deny. <laughs> yeah, and so hopefully sharing with others, I can inspire others to to know that they can get through too. And um, yeah, and hopefully, yeah, I can support them in that. Well, well done. And you are sharing it. 
Yes. I mean, you talk about it with us so passionately, and yet you say you're scared of public of speaking on on exactly. Zoom. Well, you just spoke on Zoom to seven people. I know, but I just find it. I don't kind of want to be seen. I suppose. <laughs> so I think that's I it. You're do you're doing a disservice to other people by not sharing your story. So you're just the messenger. Yeah. So it's not about you. I know it sounds strange. It's not about you. It's about the message that you're going to put across to the person that needs to hear your message. Yeah, I get that. And that's why I put out my book, which is very personal, intimate experience that I'm sharing with others. And I feel that that is my gift because... Um, it was quite hard to share all that stuff publicly. And, uh, you know, so I'm still, you know, uh, simulating that I've publicly, you know, revealed uh, my experience. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I've got 30 books. The Pyramids of Chi have just put an order to buy 30 more books of mine. Right. Uh, the Barn is just uh, wanting another 10. I'm now selling my jewellery and more shops are taking that in. And um, yeah, so it's it's all good, you know. It's just exactly. small steps, and uh, you know, it takes a lot of work to do to do all the stuff. I'm doing a podcast as well, twice a month, so I'm recording those, and um, yeah, doing my jewelry and obviously promoting my book. So yeah, it's 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 a lot of energy, and uh, obviously, I'm totally dedicated to that because I feel that is what I'm here to do. So I'm just following that step by step really the best you can do well you're doing great you're doing great <laughs> because this is a journey and and i think you know i think a lot of people think well i've got a book now and i should have this should all just happen mm -hmm. it's a journey it will take time it will take time and time and time and persistence and you you think four people's bad trust me i've stood in a room with zero people <laughs> before zoom yeah. and i've got organized this this event we're trying to get my speaking up and it's just me i know i remember that's you know, now that's embarrassing but the reason why it's not so embarrassing because no one's there to see it except me yes yes right? exactly Being I, so I had this amazing yeah. seminar on the weekend and i inspired the whole room uh -huh. <laughs> yeah no i remember early on when i was in a band we did gigs to three people so and that's public and that's a lot of effort leaving your house for practicing playing live to three people. Uh, sometimes, well, actually that when it was three people, one of them happened to be an enemy journalist. So we got a very good review and things happened. But yeah, of course. Well, Definitely. you've got to do it all. You've got to go through every experience, all the good ones, all the frustrating ones, all the, you have to just experience the whole lot. Absolutely. Hi, Stephen. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. We thought it's taken a little while for the UK to wake up, hey? Is it a bit chilly? Yeah. Yeah, it's nice and early over here. Good to see you, mate. All right. Anyone who, who would like to maybe do share next? Anyone want to just share anything? I'm happy to just Good. say a few little words. Um, Sue and I have kind of been at the stage. Um, the, we had the exciting stage of finalising the front cover um, and kind of finalising a back cover. And, uh, Are you able to share the front cover with these people or is it still hush-hush? No, I'm happy. I'm happy to share okay. anything. All right. I'll just, yeah, <laughs> let me give you a and, um, All right, mate. Go. Okay. I'll, I'll just uh, open that. And... Um, and then the next stage is the books kind of going to page layouts. And that's been interesting seeing some little parts of that and everything. Uh, we've been seeking testimonials. Um, oh, I've got to do that. Oh, oh me too. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm writing a note to self right now. I mean, <laughs> I'm writing it on my tile. <laughs> uh, very kind of you. So this is that, that's the front cover. Um, if you can see that, and hopefully that's kind of the right sort of size. Um, so we've got a a testimonial from uh, Richard Boyatzis uh, in America, who's very well known for um, crime or leadership, his book, and also how to help people change. 
Um, and so we're excited when he wrote back and we reference him on a couple of occasions in the book. And then My Manifesto is the name of our company and the name of the book and the little M underneath is kind of the writing. It's all about writing your own manifesto. And our subtitle kind of hopefully pops a little bit in this kind of burgundy colour and the little turn down page. And so it's in theory quite clean and simple, but hopefully also, um, you know, engaging enough to go, oh, I wonder what that's all about. So that's that's the that's the cover. Um, well, so done. And, and it's been lovely getting testimonials in. And a few have said, no, um, you know, unfortunately, you haven't got the time. And for me to write a testimonial, I really feel I need to read the whole book. And I really can't quite do that. But, um, you know, here's a little sentence about you, because I know you a little bit, if you want to use that on your website or something. So that's nice when people are, you know, um, and we try to very, you know, respectfully say, you know, fully understand if you haven't got the time. Um, and, and so on. So, but where, you know, it's a pretty nice thing when you wake up in the morning and someone's written a little testimonial about your book and go, I've had a lovely little afternoon reading your book and here's, how, how's this sound? And you think that sounds lovely. So that's um, been a nice little stage, even though it's also a bit of a scary stage and kind of who you put it out there to. Some we know well, um, and one or two we've gone just a bit random and gone just, well, I wonder if that person seems a little bit aligned to their work. I wonder if, and some have written back going, thank you, but we don't do testimonials or thank you, but we're too busy and and all that. stuff. So, so a bit of kind of Andrew support and encouraging us to be brave and what have you got to lose? And if a few people write back no to you and all that sort of stuff. So um, interesting little step that we're in here. So I'm going well. Awesome, mate. And that is such an important point, isn't it? If you... If you don't ask, it's a definite no. Yeah. If you do ask, there's a chance you'll get a yes. Yeah. So what would you rather? Yeah. And then when you remind people, it's like, oh, I haven't <laughs> done that. <laughs> and that was a very subtle reminder too, that was. <laughs> that was. You did that beautifully, mate. You? you hit a couple of birds with one stone there. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. Well done. And the cup looks great and you've done incredibly well. So good stuff. This is such an exciting part, part of the process. For those of you who are published, you'll know this this feeling when, you know, it's starting to take shape and all that work you put into it and then there's a cover and then you see the layout and the typeset and you, and oh, it looks like a book because when it's a manuscript, it's just a document, right, on a computer, but then it starts taking shape and it's, and then, Justin, you look forward to this bit, the, the day that arrives, the actual book arrives and you un and you unpack it. And you pull it out it. and you smell it and you hold it <laughs> and you flick the pages. And um, sorry for those of you who haven't experienced it yet. I'm just, you know, <laughs> just hurry up and make sure you video it. So from the time yeah. that you yeah. see the box on the front doorstep, get someone to video you opening it or set the camera up because yeah, it, like that. that's just a once in you know a lifetime. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah. That first, you repeat it, but there's nothing like that first time that you open it. And then use that to put it on your socials and your marketing and everything as well because that's gold, the reaction of you get that book. I was being judged for the Geelong Business Excellence Awards um, last year and Whispers of Resilience turned up as the judges were leaving and I'm like, oh, my book's here. Here, video me to the judges. And I made them video me as so I The was judges were videoing you. Classic. <laughs> only you, Justine, only you. And then they're like, can we get a photo with you with the book out the front with your sign? And so I'm like, my daughter's inside. I'm like, oh, we can't kind of take a photo of the judges and be in the book. And it was like such a, a momentous occasion. But um, the first time you ever open up a box of books with your name on the front cover, wow, and smell it. Yeah, so good, so, so good. Awesome. Well, good on you, Justin. That's great news. Anyone else want to share where they're currently at? I will. Thoughts, breakthroughs, news, Justine's. I've had a massive breakthrough in the last four weeks, as Andrew um, knows. Um, I've been writing my book for four years <clears throat> and I've started it and rewritten it oh, about three or four times. 
and I'm finally on the right track and I'm finally feeling comfortable with what I'm actually writing and I've just plowed out the second chapter yeah. and um, yeah I uh, finished it a couple of days ago so now I'm on to the third chapter so that one is coming along really nicely um, I've also got the idea for a series of 12 other short books between 80 to 100 pages that will pump some of those out um, by the end of the year as well as wor working on Moxie. This children's book, I rewrote the story on Saturday and I have taken your advice on board, Mr Jobling. Who mind? Um, you took my advice. I know for right. a change. Wow. I know, I know. I said it publicly too. You did, and this is recorded. I know. Wow. Um, so I, I am I am slightly changing the story a little bit, not much, because I can't change too much because they've already signed off on it. Um so this is a children's book that I'm writing. Oh, I've written, but I'm kind of changing a little bit and illustrating for a charity. And the launch is the biggest book launch I've ever been involved in and there will be well over um, about 250 people, 300 people at this launch um, with every notoriety person in Geelong um, pretty much there at $300 a ticket. So it's huge um, and the theme of the night is my book which is scaring the bejeebies out of me, which stalled me in starting it as well. So who was, Alice, was you saying about, someone was saying about procrastination and starting things? Was that you tonight? No, I've just done another Zoom. Sorry, it was the previous Zoom. Um, in not starting. I think we can relate to it though. Yeah, in procrastination, you know, becomes bigger than Ben Hur and not starting it. And anyway, I'm under the flow. I'm under page eleven. I've got nineteen pages to do in the next two weeks. So I feel that I'm on track with with this as well in in painting it and getting smashing it out. And then Justin, it'll go to the typesetter, well, to the graphic artist, who's my auntie, um, and I'll sit down with her over a full day and we'll typeset it all up and lay the graphics out on it and put it into um, get the first um, a proof done. And then the nervous part is um, sending that off to the charity for them to sign off on it to say that they approve it so it's one step more than when you get the proof back on your own work yeah I, you know nervous on that but then having to send it then on to someone else to say oh yeah we're happy with that we we want to order ten thousand a hundred thousand copies of the book so yeah you'd hate um, to have done all the artwork and then saying we're not happy with the art we want this changed well, I sent one through the other day and I and there was a piece that I did not like at all and I'm like, I'm not happy with this. And I got no comment back and I thought, yeah, you're not happy with it either. So it's been, oh, God. So I've stopped sending pieces through now because I don't want any more negative comments until like I've done them all and then here you go um, with it. But, uh, yeah, you know, sometimes you've got to push your boundaries and your comfort zones and this is definitely, as Andrew knows, has pushed all of them um, as an illustrator and a writer as well. Writing a manuscript is easy. Writing a kid's book is really hard, really, really hard because you've got to hit the mark in 150 to 200 words. Mm. Really, really hard. And same, same but different. I That took me six, seven drafts of that and just looking at it, reading over it, and you don't want to know how many times I've rewritten Hope um to get it to the point where it is now and it's still not quite there i mentioned the word hope too many times so because the character's name's hope and they're trying to find hope and the theme and the theme of the book's hope so you can mm -hmm. imagine how many times hope was just then mm -hmm. read it to me the other day and it's hope 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 blah 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 hope 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 and i'm thinking i'm losing hope here so anyway i'm working on it good awesome well that's great just then well that's done that me at the moment so well done hang, well in, there. Done. hang in there guys hang in there because it will happen yeah. i'll give you hope mm -hmm. this is this is hope this is all they gave me to work off that's hope that's hope 
And mm -hmm. so from hope to hope. Ah, uh, look at that. That's great. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there. Good. Well done. Thanks, Justine. Well done, as always. Well done. Where are we? Anyone else got anything they want to throw into the mix at the moment? Any questions, any challenges? How are you going, Steve? Anything you want to add in? We haven't been to Europe yet, so let's pop over to Europe. Oh, I do. do I... Oh. Yeah, I do. I am still for the cold, so... I Don't blame the weather. Don't you yeah, no. blame the weather. It's my own fault for living somewhere. It's constantly cold and dark, so I should I should be used to it by now. You just right, mate. That'll warm you up. Right, lots. Yeah. So like, yeah, I think I'm like trying to find the time to write in a minute. So like working with Andrew, I've got a plan, so I know what I know the book. I know. All the chapters. Um, so, yeah, just got to get my head down and start writing it now. So, um, um, yeah, I've written, I think I'm, I'm happy with the first chapter that I've written. So, just, I'm now getting in, writing the second chapter. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah I think that's, that's where I'm at the minute. So, I'm, I'm kind of, a top couple months not being very well, so yeah. I'm just really getting back into <laughs> getting back into to real life, you know. So it's like I just really just where I'm at at the minute, and so like, yeah, I'm, I'm still um, excited about the book I want to write. So that's the main, that's the main thing, I guess. It's just like yeah. It's so hard, like, it's, it's the hard part is just getting into that way and have it, isn't it? So, I just, 100%. yeah, I just seem to, like, be, I'd be writing in, like, ebbs and flows at the minute. So, I'm still, I'm still searching for that, yeah, that, that writing routine kind of things. Yeah. But, and any any tips and advice on that would be, <laughs> but I know I know there's no answer. There's no magic wand, you know. Just yeah, yeah. Just hope when you got like a lot of spin, a lot of spinning pits and what. So I got I got quite a lot of all that stuff going on at the minute. So yeah, so that's really what I'm at. So. All right, good, mate. Well, anyone got any advice for this young man about creating when you've got lots going on? How do you how do you create a routine, a rhythm? Because that's the question, isn't it? Because I think if you're going to see, if you're going to find out what stops probably ninety nine percent of people from achieving what they want, it's exactly that. It's just dropping the ball in the middle and getting distracted and losing the routine. So, anyone got any any advice? Um, I'm not published yet, but my routine for my writing was basically I set up a spreadsheet and the goal on the spreadsheet daily was to reach a certain um, word count. Um, so I, the motivation was to try and beat myself to get to that word count ahead of time. Um, so like you're, if you put into your GPS... <laughs> of your car, you want to reach a destination, always try and beat it by like a couple of minutes. Um, that's what I did with my book. That's Maybe a great help. That's, that's all, you know, that's really good. And I think the other thing to think about, if you think about that analogy of if you're driving somewhere and you've got to get somewhere by the end of the day and you don't get there, it means you've got to drive extra further the next day as well. And, and so, and if you miss a couple of days and I mean, I know in my head that would really annoy the crap out of me. I, I would want to get there. Like you, Jane, I think I'd be the same, that mindset. And, Steve, that's your – you're an athlete. So you understand, you know, like if you try and put it into perspective of the training you've got to do in a certain day, if you miss a day of training, you're behind yeah. the ball. 
you've got a, that's a great that's awesome jane i think you also need so. to make a commitment in your diary or your calendar that it's an appointment back with yourself to actually write as yeah. well. So I so with me with my drawing at the moment, I'm on a deadline, but I've actually had to block out a lot of time in my calendar. So then other people can't book in time around it as well. And I get distracted by other bright, shiny objects because that happens to me quite a lot um oh bright new thing i'm going off over here um and to stay on task um with it also working out what your why is because maybe you're lost sight on how strong your why is because when you when you work out what your why is and why you why you are actually doing it you will make time for it yeah when you right. know how strong your why is. But sometimes when we've been working on these things for a while, our why kind of diminishes and we forget, you know, what we're doing and why we're doing it. And sometimes it's just a matter of taking a step backwards and going, okay, who am I writing this for? Why am I doing this? Have I given myself a deadline when I want this done or am I just prepared to sit back and cruise through for another five years doing it? Yeah, that's a good point. Look, there's lots of good points in there, but the bottom line is that the, the that little chasm between getting started on an action like writing and turning it into a unconscious habit is the hardest that's the hardest chasm you'll ever cross. Yeah. And it's just, you just got to, you've got to put in everything you can. And I think what Justine suggested, great. What Jean suggested, great. I think you do both of them. And I think you've been, I think, Stephen, you've got someone who's account keeping you accountable. Yeah. And someone you can check in with on a daily basis. Or oh, I certainly recommend that's a good idea to get someone that you can just message. Yep. Done my writing today. And, um that helps enormously an accountability partner not someone yeah. to just let you off the hook someone that if you don't check in with them on the day they go hey mate where are you waiting you know you need someone yeah. that's actually going to keep you on track well no one can keep you on track that's your job but yeah going to um catch you when you're not so there's a few I, it's a multi-pronged approach i don't think there's any one so size fits all with this kind of thing it's just it takes a bit of grunt to get through mm. 63 days. Alice? Um, I would, uh, well, a few tips from me. Uh, I would um, visualise your book already finished. Uh, you know when we have some time to daydream a bit, I would already visualise it already finished and really feel those feelings yeah. because then you're embodying the fact that it's already done. So somewhere in the realms, it's already done, right? Um, I would also create an image of what the cover is um, with the name, even if you change it, it doesn't matter. And even if it's not the right image at the end, it doesn't matter. But I would create, you know, like a picture with the words on it um, and put it up around your house or, you know, so you're also visualizing it already finished, mm -hmm. even if it's not, even if you change the name, obviously I changed the name of mine many times um, and I changed the cover, but, you know, just to have that or have a beautiful image with the words on just to really, connect to the fact that it is done you know with your name and and the name of the book and the subtitle um yeah definitely have somebody that will encourage you maybe they're also writing a book and uh, you can encourage each other when you say oh i wrote my thousand words a day i wrote my thousand words i wrote my that you know and then once you write your thousand words a day then you end up writing more you know and i i, I mean i always have these little books and uh so when i get an idea I put it in there because once your mind is working, it's actually subconsciously working and it's subconscious, you know, because obviously every, well, I don't know how you want to see it spiritually or whatever, but, you know, it's like once you start to decide you want to do something, all the forces come into play to get you there. You know, they're all there, all your ancestors or spiritual guides or whatever you want to call it, are there to, you know, to really help you and support you. 
So you really want to connect with them. And if you get stuck, maybe just ask them for some help and say, hey, I'm stuck. I can't get down to do this. And, you know, yeah. maybe have a conversation with that. Um, but yeah, definitely get some encouragement from somebody yeah. that, that, that really, you know, has your heart in it too. That, like I did my thousand words today. I mean, I'm encouraging lots of friends that happen to be writing books and just to really encourage each other. Um, you know, somebody genuine that, you know, that just wants the best for you, I think is uh, always great to get on board somebody that can do that for you. And you can do that for them too. Yeah, I think that is a, yeah, getting, getting that firm accountability partner sounds like something that would really help me. So, Good. oh, and one other thing, one other thing, which is what I do with everything I do. I, obviously, maybe not the talk, but I try to. <laughs> um, is is actually everything is easy and everything is fun, and make it your intention that it's going to be fun and easy. Because when we yeah. say things are hard, and when we say like, that, then I don't want to do it, you know. So I just tell myself whatever I'm learning new, whether it's guitar or whether it's playing paddle or, or whatever I'm doing, I just say it's going to be easy and fun because I just don't want to learn anything or do anything in any other way because. I don't want to do it. I, there's a resistance, you know? So if you get into the energy of this is going to be fun because I'm going to have a whole book and I'm going to be able to share that with people and, you know, just get into that, that sort of excitement energy, you know, not, it's, it's not going to be hard. It's going to flow through your palm. It's going to just, or type on your computer. It's all just going to come through. It's all here. It's all around you. All the words are there. All the ideas are there. It's just bringing it into, you know, uh, embodying it and creating it. Yeah, time good advice. Very good advice. There you go, mate. You got plenty, hey? Yeah, I got like You've got no right excuses there. now, mate. You have got zero excuses. Yeah, I think the only other thing, the only other thing I would add, unless anyone else has got something, is withhold something you enjoy until you've written. Yeah. Like dinner, for example, or breakfast. Yeah, and yeah. often, well, in the morning, I write and I say, okay, when I finish writing, then I'm going to enjoy my breakfast. Yeah. So, yeah. so you yeah, do it and yeah. then you reward yourself with something that, that you're going to do anyway, but but you withhold it until you've done the writing. Yeah. Yeah, it's like making it more the priority in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like... To pick up a minimum time that they aim for to write. But this is just a case of getting started. Num a minimum number of what? Like to pick up a minimum time that oh, they time. They aim for. Like, I want to write for an hour. Mate, like, whatever works for you, pick something and stick at it. Yeah. Anything. Five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes doesn't matter. Just yeah. do it. Doesn't oh, matter. That... The, the key is the the key is the the routine. The key at the, to start with. Once you've got the routine, then you can start tweaking the time or the number of words or whatever it might be. Get the routine embedded. What are you going to say, Kat? Oh, on that, I'm. I actually was reading something recently about the idea of micro habits, and and um, so people often fail at habits because they say, "I'm going to write a." thousand words or I'm going to write in for an hour and if you're not that at that point that's quite overwhelming and then it's really easy to only write 300 and be like oh, well forget it and then not write for three days because you already failed the one done so the the um the woman whose book I'm referencing uh, who's a PhD in the subject of um behavioral science um not get it done but that was great Justin thank you for that recommendation um but this woman was talking about how one of her clients wanted to exercise and just like couldn't connect to any of the like I'll live longer for my children all the like everything you were just saying Alice about like envisioning their book like that just wouldn't have worked for them and like but so where they started was was not walk around the block because even that was too big um much less run um it was put on my running shoes and then you could take them off um and for a while, that's what he did. He put on his running shoes and then he took them off. And that was, but then you build from there. Like that was the smallest piece that he needed first. And I think, you know, Andrew, you were just asking about the chasm and the chasm is like, it's perceptively different depending on who you are and where you are and like what the task is and how you feel and everything like that. So I think it's, um, 
I remember years ago, I was like hearing people saying about a certain number of words, a certain number of minutes, and that didn't really work for me for a really long time. Like the first thing that worked for me was that idea of just touch the book every day. So some days that was open Word document and then close it. And that sounds ridiculous, but that was what I needed to be able to build the habit of that. And then that meant that some as soon as I touched the book, like that was already a win. And then anything beyond that was bonus. Um, and that's where it built from me. So I, I think it's really important to give yourself permission to start where you are and the, like the size of it. you fail when the, when it's too big, like you don't fail when it's too small. So if, if the smallest size is literally just, I'm going to have one minute where I think about nothing but the book, that's fine because then you'll get beyond that. Um, and there's no like, and by the end of the month, like sometimes it's all just too much. Um, and like, I know it comes, I guess from where I'm at right now, it's just like, wow, like a thousand words a day is <laughs> way too much for where I'm at right now. Um, but th- it's not to say it's not admirable. It's not to say I wouldn't love to get there, but like, I couldn't do that from where I'm at today. Um, so I think it's okay to just remind yourself you can actually like where you are now is there's still like a way to start that habit. Yep, that's great, Kat. And that's so true. Yeah. And then celebrate, celebrate opening your document and closing it again. <laughs> it seems like, well, why I would I celebrate that? Because you, because you touched it. I identified that I was, when I hopped into bed, I was playing a video game, an app on my phone. I was playing Candy Crush. And I'm like, this is ridiculous, Justine. You're doing 15, 20 minutes of this every night when you could be writing your book. And so I swapped now. I do 15, 20 minutes of just writing. And what do you know? I've done two chapters. Mm. Doesn't it feel better that you feel better after that than playing Candy Crush? Yeah, well, it took me a few days. So, like, all my levels are dropping and I've lost all of this in it. But that's not going to get my book written. So it was identifying a bad habit that I was creating. And because, as you know, Andrew, my life is insanely busy at the moment and trying to find some time to do it. And I'm like, well, there's 15, 20 minutes. And you, I mean, and I wrote a blog recently called um, The the Time Goldmine um, because I, um, I stopped watching TV, like, totally. Like, I haven't watched much. But I, you know, it starts creeping back and I, and I just made a decision a few weeks ago to turn it off. And, oh, my gosh, the energy, the headspace, the time um, that just all of a sudden opened up, the things I could do, you know, I, you know, and part of that was self-care. You know, I've been seeing sunsets every night and, and things I would, normally would be plonked on the couch with brain in neutral, wasting flushing that time down the toilet and even as justine said you look at you think 15 20 minutes today well that's not a big deal yeah but add that up over 12 months every day 365 times 20 minutes you, you're looking you're looking at about what's that that's 120 yeah, hours that's, that's 100, a book. 120 hours is a book and 120 hours i mean how many days how many 24 that's five days mm. There's five days you've just flushed down the toilet effectively. And we all could find, we can all find those little things that we'll, that we do here and there, little, you know, little moments of scrolling or playing games or watching cute animal videos on social media. And, and there's so many of them, isn't there? And they're so cute for goodness sake. But it's just, it's, stealing it's stealing your life that's amazing what you can do so the time is there you just got to make it create it that's good well Stephen, you have got so much advice mate you're probably feeling bombarded now with too much advice but no i think it's really cool and um yeah at the end of the day it's but it's my responsibility you know i go take that on and I go, yeah, this is something that I've I made a choice that I want to write another book, you know, and, uh, and yeah, it's just something I need to work out how I can do it. So, I mean, I'm, I, I, 
you kind of you feel like when you spend a long time, so I've been working with you for over a year now, I'm doing, like, I guess, you know, it's my minds and expectations is important as well, because I, I probably thought, oh, well, any yes, time I have a book and it'll be published, and I'm sat here now, and I'm like, yeah, I've written a chapter, and it's like, oh, God. Really, it's really, a great chapter, though, really, mate. You, yeah, you've got to get, you've got to, like, get over that. So, because, like, I'm probably sitting here thinking, well, yeah, yeah, I've kind of failed, you know, but I think, yeah, it's, you need to get over that, don't you? And I need, I need to look at the fact that, like, yeah, I've done, I've done the outline, I've, I've done a, a, like, a chapter plan, plan trying to work, like, yeah, so I have achieved something, just, yeah, just, like, so that's why I need to get all that thing. I think I'm like. What you don't want to do, Stephen, is beat yourself up on what you haven't yeah. done and sit yeah. in that either, which a lot of people do. Oh, well, I haven't written this. I'm not. Should have, should have this, should have that. Yeah, I should have. I'm, I haven't done this. And then you procrastinate even more because you haven't done it. It's like, mm. okay, tomorrow is a brand new day. I'm going to create a new habit starting from now or today actually because you, you're you at the beginning of your day. We're at the end of ours. So today I'm going to write a couple of hundred words in my book. I'm going to start today doing that. And then when you do, pop it into the group. And tell us that you've written some. Yeah. Be accountable to in the group to all of us. It's interesting. That happened for a while, didn't it, Kat? There was a there was a few people yeah. that in the Facebook group they they wanted to get back into routine. So they said, you know, because you know I've got the sixty three day tracking sheet. Um, day one, two hundred and twenty seven words, and they posted it, and it was amazing. Lots of people going, "Well done, great job." So that might be something to do. But again, just yeah. going back on to Justine's point, Stephen, it's so easy to look back and and beat ourselves up for what we didn't do. But what I want you to think about is what's changed over the last twelve months. What have you learnt? What's evolved? What what have you what not not what have you done? But what have you what insights have you got over the last twelve months? And I'm sure, and you don't need to answer the question now, but this is what you want to think about. In those moments of inactivity, what what did I learn or what have I learnt about myself and about this journey over the last 12 months? And if you can find something in there that you've learnt, then that's not failure at all. That's success. And if you apply that, then then that's a win. So, yeah. all perspective. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's only, it's only really failure I can kick off. So, like, you know, I'm... Yeah, I'm still here. The fact that I'm here today is yep. a good thing, you know. And, yep. and it, it, it's actually a, it's a good day to start again because it's, uh, it's Pancake Day in the UK. So, is it? You know, it's a Trove Tuesday. Uh, yeah, it's Trove Tuesday. So. Oh, well, you better go and have a pancake, mate, and do some writing. That'll... Yeah, I've got yep. pancakes tonight and then later yeah, tomorrow is a new start in it. So, uh, tomorrow is awesome. yeah. Yeah, it's Wednesday tomorrow, so it's a new beginning, in it? So, yeah. It's, good, it's just not too I many think, pancakes, all right? Yeah. So if you're training. Yeah, it's a good point. I haven't really made much use of the Facebook, uh, the Facebook group. So I think that's something that, yeah, I didn't really make good use of that. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, good yeah, job. everything today, everything's been really good. And yeah, take all the advice on board and then, um, yeah, just try and get a little bit better. Awesome, mate. Good on you. Well, we look forward to next month hearing all the great things you've been doing, all right? Thank you. Yeah, good one. Okay, guys, Um, any last thoughts or ideas or questions or comments before we wrap up another fabulous forum? Nope. Okay. Well, Stephen, you hang around because you and I get to chat now. But everyone else, 
thank you for everything. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Otherwise, I'd be sitting alone. <laughs> so I like having people to chat, hang out with. And thanks for your contributions. And um, and Stephen, thank you for your dilemma because that's that's sort of unlocked some pretty amazing thoughts and ideas from this group. So yeah, it's been wonderful. All right, guys, have a fabulous month. And I'm sure I'll see a lot of you. I will definitely see a lot of you in the meantime. But um, we'll see you next month. And have a good right. evening or day. All the best, everyone. Yeah.